Curtis Joseph took the ice over 19 NHL seasons. He was instantly recognizable. His goalie mask bore the image of Cujo, the vicious dog popularized in author Stephen King's horror novel. Cujo, as Joseph was known, amassed 454 wins, seventh most in NHL history, while dressing for six different franchises. Joseph garnered votes for the Vesna Trophy in eight different seasons and was a finalist in 1999 and 2000 for his hometown Maple Leafs. Perhaps most impressive, Joseph accomplished it all after being undrafted out of the University of Wisconsin and signing with the Blues as a 22-year-old free agent in 1989. Joseph was a standout postseason performer. He appeared in the playoffs 14 times in 19 seasons, tied for sixth most among goalies in league history, and finished his career with a 2.42 GAA and 917 save percentage in 133 playoff appearances. His 16 postseason shutouts trail only Martin Brodeur and Patrick Waugh. Internationally, Joseph won an Olympic gold medal with Canada in 2002 and silver medals at the 1996 World Championship and World Cup of Hockey. A fierce competitor on the ice, Joseph was a model citizen off of it as he was awarded the King Clancy Memorial Trophy in 2000 for exemplifying leadership qualities and making humanitarian contributions in his community. Although Cujo never nabbed the ultimate prize of a Stanley Cup title, he left his prints all across North America as one of the most successful goalies in hockey history. So when we're in the winning business, which is what Mike Babcock says and everyone in the NHL agrees, Johnny, you pointed out your former teammate was fourth in the league when he retired. Boy, that's a lot of wins to not be in the Hockey Hall of Fame. Please step up and defend your guy. Well, full disclosure, I'm a little biased. Obviously, I played with Cooch for you several years, be. both in Toronto and Arizona. Unbelievable teammate. You know, forget about goalies being strange on their own. He was a solid teammate, great guy to have around. But he was an interesting case because the one thing he didn't do was win a Stanley Cup. And so you could never give him that. He doesn't have that check on his resume box. He played exceptionally well in the playoffs for some underdog teams. When he was with the favorite Red Wings, they couldn't quite get it done through no fault of his own, largely because of scoring issues. But he never won the Cup. So there's that. But he did win an Olympic gold medal. He did represent. He was a starting goalie for Canada in the 96 World Cup. Like, he's been one of the, considered one of the best goalies in Canada, therefore one of the best goalies in the world. No doubt. Multiple times in his career. The other thing that makes him very interesting is that he thrived playing for teams that were not dominant. So the busier he was, you think about his run with the Oilers, you think about his run with us with the Leafs, he was awesome when he, he had to be busy and great, and he might be, give up three goals, but he wouldn't give up that fourth as long as you kept scoring for him. Not like, kind of unlike Marty Berdur, who was great at being comfortable in those lower event games for himself. And, and really making, the big, and making the, the big save. And making the big save, yeah, you can't take it. Which is as important yeah, as numbers. Absolutely, three. absolutely. But the thing is, you think about when Cujo started, 1990. The only thing that mattered to goaltenders from 1990 to 2005, the only thing that mattered was wins. Amen. They didn't worry about goals against so much. Maybe a little save percentage was not a thing. Goal save above expected. We never heard of what that was. They only measure themselves by wins. And so here's a guy who plays the most important position that is mostly concerned with wins, and he was fourth all time in the history of the league. Preach it. In wins. Yep. And he, he hasn't done enough. I mean, I get he bounced around a lot of different teams at the end of his career. I get that he never won a Stanley Cup. He might not have won a Vezina, but, man, he was a top-five goalie for the better part of 15 years, and I saw firsthand what he could do for a team, taking them from terrible to good, which he did on multiple occasions. So, yeah, I, I get, like, Henrik Lundqvist goes in ahead of Curtis Joseph, but Cujo has a great case to be made that he belongs in the Hall of Fame. I don't disagree with you. I played against Curtis Joseph, and obviously... I didn't take many shots on him because I was on the <laughs> other end. Mm. Having said that, we know how dominant of a goaltender he was playing against him. It was always, uh, you got to make sure you get traffic in front of Curtis Joseph, all those things. You got to tip pucks because if he sees it, he's going to stop it. And anytime you go into a game thinking that way, we knew he was an elite goaltender as an opposition. Um, the wins speak for itself, and it is about wins. It's a different era. I think it's a little more complicated with goaltenders. It is. Because of the fact that, what is the criteria? We don't exactly know. Sometimes it's not transparent. Is it you have to win a Stanley Cup? Is it your goals against and save percentage? And you made a great case of 
why it should be different in different areas because yes. it really didn't matter. We didn't have goals against expected. You're absolutely right. And none of those numbers really mattered. It was about W's. And Curtis Joseph certainly did a lot of that. For me, he'd be in. No question. Um, I know everybody can't get in. And again, it's just I wish we knew a little bit more exactly. Like there should be check marks on <laughs> what they decide. What's the criteria? What's the criteria? Sure. Like, is it you have to win a ring, but if you don't win a ring, you need these kinds of numbers, whether it's for a goaltender or a player from a statistical standpoint, but you mentioned international play is important. Mm -hmm. He's done that, won a gold medal. So he was a, a great goaltender for almost two decades in the National Hockey League. I feel he's in, should be in, not sure he's going to get in, but I respect listening to a guy that played with uh, Curtis Joseph, because you're in the room all the time. You're around him. You know how important he is to your team. You know the type of career he had, especially when we played alongside him. The other part about goaltenders that make it especially difficult is that eras for goaltenders are so different. Mm -hmm. The goalies in the 80s, the best goalie in the 80s, might be in the Hall of Fame, he'd have terrible numbers. Because every goalie had terrible numbers relative to what we talk about Grant now. Fuhrer. Grant Fuhrer. His numbers are not good. And he belongs. Of, of course, Billy Smith. Like, these guys didn't have. Yes. And yet, Ken Dryden in the 70s, and the, they did have those kind of numbers. So each era sort of reflected the goaltender stats based on how the game was played around them. And so, you know, Cooge played in an era in the 90s where there was a lot of goals scored. And so he might not have the highest save percentage, the lowest goals against average, but he has the wins. Now, part of those wins are longevity. But there's something to be said for making the Hall of Fame because you were at, played at an elite level for a long time. Talk to Dave Andrichuk. Mm -hmm. Talk to Mark Recchi. These guys were never the best player in the league, but they were really, really good for a long time, and they're in there. That's what Cujo is. Well, really, said. really good for a long time. That's why he deserves to be. And I, I love what Wayne Gretzky said. To make those points. Uh, I think last week uh, on TNT he says, in a 5-5 game, you knew Grant Fear was going to make the exactly. big save to make sure you won the hockey game. He was not going to give up that sixth goal. I happened to grow up in Edmonton. I watched Grant Fear. He was dynamite. And then when I look at his numbers, I go, okay, they're not comparable to today's numbers uh, from the goaltenders because it was a different time. But he was a spectacular goaltender that won. And when the great one says that, I believe him. And I watched it firsthand as a kid growing up being an Oilers fan as well. Well, then you should like Cujo because he was at his very best it, with those yes, underdog Oilers was. upsetting Dallas, upsetting Colorado Amen. when he was the reason why they won. Not a cup, but series.